Hey guys, Brett Taylor from BleacherNation.com coming to you today with another Saber Short. And today's is on the extremely advanced concept of batting average. I know, you're immediately thinking, but batting average is on, that's not an advanced statistic, that's on the back of all my baseball cards. You know, the ones we all collected in the 90s that aren't worth anything now and that I can't retire until I'm 95. <laughs> Uh, oh. How could that be a Sabre stat? Well, let me tell you, I'm not here today to explain batting average to you. Uh, instead, the point of this video is to explain some of batting average's shortcomings and why generally we might prefer to look to other statistics instead. Okay, so batting average is pretty simple and you probably already know this. It's basically just the ratio of the number of hits a batter gets over the course of his at-bats. So, like three hits and ten at-bats, well, that's a 300 batting average. The problem with batting average is not what it tells us. I mean, there is some information in there. The problem with batting average is all the things it does not tell us. First of all, batting average believes that a hit is just a hit. A single is the same as a double, is the same as a triple, is the same as a homer. And, of course, we know that not all hits are created equal. A home run is worth a whole lot more than a single. Secondly, Batting average doesn't even consider the things that occur that don't involve an out or a hit. Okay, the big one there being walks, which we know are almost as valuable as a hit. That's why we need stats like slugging percentage, which is essentially a measure of how many bases a batter is getting in his at-bats, not just the hits. And also a stat like on-base percentage, which is essentially how frequently a batter is getting on base, regardless of how he does it. So, a batter who hits 300 but who takes no walks and only hits singles is not going to be nearly as valuable as a batter who hits 250, takes a ton of walks, and gets a ton of extra base hits. For example, this year, Phillies outfielder Ben Revere hit 306. That's great, right? Angels outfielder Mike Trout hit 287. Anyone want to argue that Revere was a more productive and valuable hitter this season than Mike Trout? If you make that argument, I will find you and I will slap you with Mike Trout's MVP award. When utilized in concert with other statistics, batting average still has its place. You most frequently see it in the slash line, together with on-base percentage and slugging. And hey, having a high batting average is still a good thing. Batting average is the foundation for both on-base and slugging, and hits obviously do provide value to the team. Relying on batting average alone to evaluate a, a hitter's performance is not good. But completely ignoring batting average probably isn't the answer either. So, the next time someone tells you that so-and-so is just a 250 hitter, as though that encapsulates everything about that player's offensive value, immediately shame that person and remove them from your life entirely. They are a bad influence, and they probably steal from children. Thanks for listening to the dangers of relying too much on batting average, a concept you'll find regularly at my site, BleacherNation.com. Don't forget to subscribe to this year's channel for more swell videos like this. Thanks, and have a great day. Ooh, Ken Griffey Jr.